you guys can keep typing the answers to those three bell ringers, but let's go ahead and move on because we have a short class today. We only have till 840. Okay, so let's get moving here. Okay, remember, you only have today and tomorrow left to get both your slideshow, all three sections, and your part B 10 question multiple choice quiz done by tomorrow night at midnight. Now, you guys don't have any drop in uh, instructional supports left because this one here this afternoon, that's for my seventh grade class. You guys had an opportunity yesterday, which was your last one. But notice the first half of the day tomorrow, this is by appointment only. So if there's something that you still need help on, you know, in terms of your project that you don't understand, you have to message me and set up a appointment instructional support. And those are going to be like 10 minutes each. But you have to message me sometime before the end of today if you still need to meet with me for a few minutes after today. And then remember, final exams are due by 11.59 p.m. tomorrow night. And then how about this here? A big, happy, smiley face because you're out for the summer as of this Friday. <laughs> Don't stop now, you're almost there. Okay, so you guys are working on your slideshow. Remember what's in your module. You have the three sections to do. Don't forget these important resources over here because they're very helpful, especially if you still don't understand how to do the uh, part three, section three that I'm going to go over today. You still have those videos to go back and watch from Ms. Gomez. Remember, you can get up to 10 points extra credit by posting your project in the discussion post. And don't forget this, your part B quiz, because that's almost worth as much as your project. Your project altogether is worth 30 points, 10, 10, 10. Another 10 if you do the extra credit and post it. So you can get 40 points out of 30 on your project, but another 20 points for the multiple choice quiz. So don't forget to do that by midnight tomorrow night. Okay, so what I have ready here is let me just show you. These were people that either already posted or I just chose on my own. So you either chose to share your project or I chose to share, share your project. And let's see, I do not see uh, Jaden in the room. So I'm going to is Charles, let's see, is Charles here? I'm gonna actually start with Charles' uh, project right here. Uh, if you're in the room, you're going to share, but if you're not in the Zoom room right now, then I'm going to share your project. So this one is Charles B. I don't see him in the room. So let me just go through his project. Nice display of his graphics, as you can see here. He did his on Italy, so notice he showed a picture of Europe and also a picture of his country. Uh, recommended way to travel, best time to visit the country. I love his, uh, you know, his design that he used on his slideshow because it's, it's very easy to read. He's got his map of Italy there. He's got his COVID-19 travel restrictions for Italy. Uh, section two, look how nice and big, you know, he displayed his population. I love that huge font size. You guys can comment on these projects too 
in the chat, the chat set on public. So things you like <clears throat> from your peers, your classmates, you can comment also in the chat. So he's got that in standard notation and in scientific notation at the bottom of the slide. Uh, same thing with the capital Rome. Then he's got the population of the United States, both in standard notation and scientific notation. Most people are not having trouble with displaying population and COVID in standard and scientific notation, and then also comparing the United States COVID cases to the, uh, their country. Any question about section two? Because I wanna focus on section three. And the reason that I picked Charlie's is because he really made this simple. Because it looks like this is hard, especially if you look at the teacher projects, but I like the way that Charlie simplified it. So this is what we mean by a ratio. There's the population of the United States on the top. Remember, a ratio is the same as a fraction. There's your divided by or over symbol, and there's the population of the country on the bottom. Okay, so when you are dividing by scientific notation, you just divide the coefficients first. And then remember that with exponents, you use the DS part of MADS PPM. So when we're taking 10 to the eighth power divided by 10 to the seventh power, all you have to do is subtract. Eight minus seven is one. This is the answer you get on your calculator by dividing the coefficients. 3.32654 divided by 6.0462 is equal to 0 0.550. But then we have that times 10 to the first. And I don't know why, I think he made a mistake right there. But in his answer, he did it correct. So the answer when you take point, so this is still 0. 0.550 times 10 to the first, you just move the decimal point over one place. So that means his answer is that. So that means basically the population of the United States is five and a half times, 5.50 times the population of Italy. Any questions, either raise your hand and I'll let you unmute your mic or you can type your question in the chat. I highly recommend you take a picture of this. Take a screenshot right now if you're still having to do section three of your project so that you have it. I like the way Charlie made it so easy. Now that's only one of three parts because section three has three parts, but any question about the population ratio, first of all. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Okay, the next thing he did was the multiplication part. And remember, you had a choice of either doubling or tripling. So it said in 10 years, if the population of your country doubles or triples, what will it be? So this is multiplying by scientific notation. So again, notice he's got his population in scientific notation. He just copied that from section two. Now he's going to triple it. So he's going to take his population and triple it. So notice he moves the three over here because you do your calculator part first. The times 10 to the seventh is left out to the side because you do your power last. So 6.0462 times three is 18.1386. He's still got his times 10 to the seventh out to the side. 
he showed that this was 10 to the first, but you don't, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's important. That's an important step here. Because notice when he rewrote 18.1386 as 1.81386, that is times 10 to the first because that goes from there to there. So now you have the MA part of MADS PPM. When you multiply with exponents, you add. So 10 to the power of 1 plus 10 to the power of 7 is 10 to the power of 8. And then when he moved that decimal place eight waves to the right, he ended up with that, 181,386,000. Any question about the multiplication part of section three? Go ahead and take a screenshot if you still haven't done this. And again, I love the way he used white, nice big white fonts on a gray background because white, you know, a light color on a dark colored background makes it really easy to follow and read. And that's part of the rubric. What you're getting graded on is the design of your slideshow. Okay, and then finally, the percentage part which will be your final slide. Okay, so on the percentage part, it said the um, population, what if you take the, um, it was 46%, I remember was the number. So it was like, what would the population be? Or no, I know what it was. I'm trying to remember how that was worded. Where did the 46% come from? Who remembers that? Because I don't have the project uh, you know, requirements in front of me. I wanna say it was 46% is less than half. Oh. It was the vaccination rate. Oh, that's right, thank you, McKenna. Yeah, that was, that was the vaccination rate, 46%. Um, so that was less than half. So what you do on that one is you have to take, so he started with Italy right here because here's his Italy number. So if you take that times 46%, well, remember a percent as a decimal looks like this. So that is not quite in scientific notation. So to change 0.46 to scientific notation, you have to move the decimal place over to there. So 46% is 4.6 times 10 to the negative one, okay? Because it basically went, you know, goes over one. Okay, so that's how you do 46% in scientific notation. So again, when you're multiplying, you're gonna take your coefficient. So we're gonna take this times the 4.6. Okay, so that's going to end up with that's how he got this. And then 10 to the seventh times 10 to the negative one. Again, when you multiply, you add exponents. So seven minus one is six. So that's how he came up with this. And then he had to convert 27.81252 to scientific notation. So that would be 2.781252 times 10 to the negative one, and then times 10 to the sixth. That's gonna be equal to 10 to the fifth. Again, when you multiply, you add, and then he changed that to standard. And I think on that one, it said you can do the percentage on either the population of your country or the United States. You didn't have to do it on both. So any question on how you do the percent of vaccinations? Again, take a screenshot. Okay, now for the fun part, sharing. Okay, so let me go back to, and I do notice that quite a few of you are here. 
So let me actually, actually this one, I see that, oh, where is he? Keller, 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 where are you, Keller? Well, that's okay. I remember I did message you guys and say that you didn't have to come if you, unless you wanted to share your project out loud. So let me hold off on Keller's and get the people that are actually present. So let me go back up to my open menu. And I know McKenna's here. So let me go ahead and pick her France project. Okay, McKenna, the floor is all yours, girl. Go ahead and uh, just give an overview of each of your slides. You don't have to read it. Just kind of talk about what it was like putting the slide together, what you enjoyed about it and so on. Um, I like the freedom of it because there wasn't any like specific stuff for the facts we had to do really. So you could kind of add your own thing to it. Um, uh, yeah, now when you said, when you say there weren't specifics, you did have the suggestions that we gave you. you. You worked off the suggestions, didn't you? Yeah. But then you added your own stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it was. It allowed you to be creative. Now, guys, I want you to go ahead and comment in the chat as your classmates are sharing. I want you to talk about things that really jump out at you, what you really like about their project. So go ahead and type some feedback for McKenna while she's sharing. Okay, McKenna, let me go on to your next slide. Um, I did Paris because the info was really easy to find and it seemed really fun. Um, and then slides one through three are just facts about it. Now, where did you find the because I didn't know this about France. The, uh, have you ever been to France? No, I haven't. Where'd you find the information about the macaroons and the eclairs? Um, I looked it up and then, yeah. And that keychain looks awesome. <laughs> Is there, can you order that souvenir online or do you have to be in Paris to get that? I don't know for sure. Okay, I really like that. What, what does it have on it? The keychains or those macaroons? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You're getting faint. Can you get closer to your mic? Yeah. And let's see, I'm looking at the chat. Someone commented about, yeah, the background, how they like your background. No, guys, so, someone, I know Yasmin, you, nobody's going to be forced to share. So if I pull up your project and you don't want to share, you don't have to. I'm not going to make anyone feel uncomfortable. Okay, and then, um, yeah, I'm not going to run the videos yet, but I like the fact that you put the link to the video. And I like the, what's that a picture of on the very bottom right of your slide there, McKenna? Um, I don't know for sure. I want to say it almost looks like it almost looks like it might be like a train station or subway station leading up to the Eiffel Tower. But I've never been in Paris myself, so I don't know if anyone knows. OK, yeah, Maria really likes your backgrounds, too. OK, go ahead and. Uh, I think this is self-explanatory, McKenna, unless you, yeah, go ahead, Jaden. Jaden has a question. I'm just saying like on the last slide, it yeah. said something about like an Eiffel Tower restaurant. So oh, I don't know yeah. if that's what it is. Yeah, I've heard about that, that there's actually a restaurant. When you go up in the Eiffel Tower, you can stop right at the base and eat at a restaurant before you go up to the top. Which, by the way, how many of you are afraid of heights? Either raise your hand or uh, type it in the chat. I'm scared to death. I, I'm a chicken when it comes to heights. And I know when I took my uh, eighth graders to Seattle, the Space Needle a few years ago for a film festival, 
uh, they all wanted to go up to the top of the space needle, needle, but I chickened out. So I made a parent go up with my class and take them up there because I'm scared to death of heights. But yeah, that's a, that looks super cool. So yeah, these are self-explanatory. Um, pretty self-explanatory on section two. Now, McKenna, when you did your ratios and your percents, were uh, was that uh, was that hard for you, or was it pretty easy? Um, it was pretty easy. And actually, yeah, I like your comments on the slide because I like like what you said about this makes sense because 7.176 times 10 to the eighth is a large number. And I like the fact that you, uh, you talked about the number of doses and yeah, you did a really good job with that. And you also remembered to put the 46% as 0.46 and 4.6 times 10 to the negative one. So that was an excellent job with that. Any other comments or questions for McKenna class? Okay, thanks for sharing, McKenna. Okay, I know Elvis is in the room. So let me jump to his project on Turkey. Okay, Elvis, the floor is, as soon as it opens up. Okay, the floor is yours, Elvis, go ahead. Okay, so um, the title is Turkey, partly in Asia and partly in Europe because it's actually split between both. Um, countries um, I, you know what i didn't know that i've got a question about that yeah if you were to travel and i don't know if you know the answer so so are you saying hang on i'm trying to get my pencil out here so are you saying that if you traveled here and like this part so it's kind of split like that right yeah so this part over here is in asia and this part over here is in europe what would you be doing with your passport? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, because you know how you have to have a passport, yeah. you know, to go to uh, different countries. And I wonder if they like have some kind of border, you know, right there in the middle where people are crossing over from Europe to Asia, if they have kind, some kind of checkpoint or wall. Do you know that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know that. Yeah, that would be really cool to know. But anyway, keep going. Uh, so I just chose this country because I didn't know much about it and the name sounded funny. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Turkey. <laughs> the biggest city in Turkey is Istanbul. And that's why most tur tourists visit Turkey uh, because Istanbul is really nice. Yeah, and do you know what, isn't that a famous building that you showed pictured there on the right? Yeah. Is that like a mosque or a cathedral? Uh, I'm not sure, but I've seen it. It's, uh, it's, so, it's somewhere in Istanbul. It's very popular. And then like those sharp pointed, like what are those? Are those steeples or something? That's really <laughs> amazing. We, that's kind of like what I'm looking out my window at because I can <laughs> see the Air Force Academy and they oh. have like a... Uh, you know, a real cool cathedral there that's got these sharp pointed spikes, but theirs are silver, you know, at the Air Force Academy. That's cool. Okay, keep going. Here's your second slide. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, so the best time to visit Turkey is during spring and fall. Um, it's very hot. It's very hot there, but they have super cold winters, so it's not very good to go there during the cold times. But there's you know, lots of yeah, how like, cold does it get? Um, I'm not sure. I just I was looking up uh when to visit Turkey and I they just said it was super cold in the winters. But they also said uh there's lots of hot air balloons during spring and fall and summer. Yeah, and then that's cool. That's the flag of one of their soccer teams. Yeah. That is. So they have the Turkey flag. So yeah, so they've got the uh, Turkey flag on the top 
of their soccer team and then the soccer ball in 1923. Yeah. Cool. Okay, go ahead on that slide. Okay, um, here, one second. Okay, so I'll start with the food. It's called pied. Uh, I had never heard of it, um, but it's actually, it's a, it's a vegan dish. So you can get it and have like vegan meat on it, but it was, it's called pied. Um, it's commonly found in Istanbul, Turkey, and uh, you can kind of make your own toppings, but usually it's cheese um, and chicken and mix of vegetables. That's cool. Doesn't it yeah. kind of look like a pizza, a shaped pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then this is my favorite thing. Uh, visit the natural Pomacale hot springs, which is uh, called Cotton Castle. Oh, my God. So the people would just soak in the hot water? Yeah, and it looks like um, it's like uh, ledges, and it goes down the whole mountain. It looks really nice. Oh man, I wonder if like you could like well that how tall are each of those sides there? Is that something you could like slide down, or is that too high up? Uh, it's really shallow, so uh, you could probably go down it. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine you're sitting on the edge with your legs hanging over? the edge and then you just go I'm gonna slide down to the next level <laughs> it, it would kind of be like a water park huh mm -hmm. I wonder if people do that and then what about that souvenir so it's called the evil eye and it's a spiritual decoration that prevents evil or bad omens coming your way so it's it's kind of like a spiritual thing uh it's very popular in America it came to America so uh you hang it like in your house or in front of your door, but I see uh, people have tattoos of it, but it's um, really popular. Yeah. Wow. That is cool. And then you have your video on there and yeah, uh, yeah that I, I'm not going to go on to your, any more math slides because I want more people to share and we only have 10 minutes left, but any questions for Elvis class? And, and again, don't be afraid to comment you know, as you're watching. And remember, you guys have a discussion post that you can also comment on your classmates' slideshows there. Thank you, Elvis. Yeah. That was really interesting. Okay, let's see who else is present in the room here. Raise your hand if you're present and you see your slideshow up there on my screen in the project folder from people that wanted to share. Yasmin, you're saying you don't want to share, correct? Yes, sir. You do or you don't? I don't. Okay. Uh, is Patrick in the room? And Yasmin, you're my co-host, so you can help me notice who's in the room. Um, Harry's not in the room. Amija, I don't think, is in the room. Sam. Is Sam in the room? No, Sam is not in the room. Uh, but I'm just going to pick some of these, even if the people aren't here. I just want you guys, especially for those of you that aren't done, I want you to use these, exam these projects that are done to kind of give you an idea as you're putting yours together today or tomorrow. And remember, make sure you submit them no later than midnight tomorrow night, because come Friday, it's too late. The school year's over. And by the way, you guys, your final grades will be posted on Friday by four o'clock in Canvas. I'm not sure when they'll be moved to power school, but I know they'll be in Canvas by Friday, your final grades. Now, what I found interesting about these projects, notice Sam said he chose Japan since some of his heritage is Japanese. And I noticed a lot of students were doing that. They were choosing their project based on their ancestry or their heritage. How many of you have enjoyed or you are enjoying the slideshow project? How many of you wish we had done more? I'm kind of sorry that we didn't do more projects 
you know, like this during the year, because I think it would have been, you know, it would have been spiced up your math learning a little bit. But again, it's, it's the issue of time, always, you know, being struggling with the time. Let me pick one more and then there's something really, really cool I want to do with you guys before we exit. Uh, Yasmin, can I share yours since you're here? Uh, sure. Okay, I'll go ahead and share Yasmin for her. Love the, uh, I, I, I love the design of your slide, Jasmine, because you have a nice contrast between your text and your information and lots of eye-catching images. Lots of colors, you know, are on your slides and that's really appealing when people are looking at a presentation like this. The Japan travel guide was a cool idea you know, in terms of the videos. And again, I'm not gonna go into the math slides, but uh, thank you, Yasmin. That was, uh, I really enjoyed your project too. Okay, so I am gonna go back to the slideshow for the class. And I wanna actually jump here. Now, I know some of you have already seen this Dr. Seuss, in fact, how many of you, and even in advisory yesterday, if you had another Math 8 teacher as your advisory teacher, because Miss Lynn came up with this, this, oh, the places you will go by Dr. Seuss. How many of you have already seen this uh, song? And it's actually by, who is the song by? The song is by, well, Dr. Seuss wrote it, but this is the Jay-Z uh, rap version of the song. How many of you have already uh, seen or heard this song? The Places You Will Go. Yeah, I know, Jaden, you saw it yesterday. Those of you, so uh, <laughs> bear with me, Jaden, because I still think it's a cool way to end the year. Okay, so here's what I really like about this Dr. Seuss. First of all, I love Dr. Seuss to begin with. But the words apply to you guys moving on to high school. Uh, it also applies to what you experience this year, especially when it talks about the waiting room on the adventures that people face during their life. So I would like you guys to comment in the chat about something from this song that either applies to you this year or you see it applying to you in high school or in your future. This is like super cool. And I am going to stop the share and reshare so that in case your screen got fuzzy, this will sharpen it. And I'm also gonna copy and paste the YouTube link so that you can watch it later because I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So how does this apply to your year and moving on to high school? Oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's open or there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't sue. Just go right along you'll start happening too. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. All the places you will go. All the places you will go. You'll be on your way up, you'll be 
always seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say, but sadly it's true. The bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. You can get all hang up in a prickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump And the chances are then that you'll be in a slump And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun Unslumping yourself is not easily done You will come to a place where the streets are not marked Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right and three quarters? Or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Well, it's not, I'm afraid you will find For a mind maker upper to make up his mind You can get so confused that you'll start into race Down long wiggled roads at a breakneck pace And grind on for miles across weirdish wild space Headed, I fear, toward a most useless place The waiting place For people just waiting 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 Waiting, waiting. Waiting for a train to go. Actually, that's a cool place to stop right there. Because how was your experience at Cherry Creek Elevation and the whole experience with COVID? You know, and what it forced us to do. How was that like a waiting place in your life? I want you to just think about that because I want to make a couple last comments here before I dismiss you. And so let me actually go to here. And I, I want to say this. First of all, what I'm excited for my next adventure is that I can finally re-retire because <laughs> I was retired before I came out of retirement this year to kind of help out at Cherry Creek Elevation. So I want to thank you guys, not only for an awesome school year, but for giving me and my wife great ideas of places to visit that you guys shared in your slideshows, because I'm pretty excited about, about some of the countries, you know, and what you guys discovered and talked about. So anyway, uh, I love this quote here by Ernie Hardwell. It's time to say goodbye, but I think goodbyes are sad and I'd much rather say hello, hello to a new adventure. So I wish all of you guys great new adventures. It's been my pleasure being your teacher this year and you guys have a safe and happy summer and best wishes to all of you in the future. Sayonara. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. You're welcome. Bye. You guys Thank take you. care. Bye. Bye-bye. Love you guys. You guys be safe.